we go. Thank you very much, John. Very nice presentation. We will move forward for our final presentation. And uh, this gentleman's going to do the Ottawa portion of it, I understand. Yes. All right. Everybody's probably seen him around somewhere, Mr. Jay Shea, from uh, 107 Squadron, uh, Spitfire in Saskatoon. He had the opportunity to uh, visit the Netherlands with our good friend, Weisha, and, uh, and he's going to tell us about Ottawa. Go ahead, sir. So, I was fortunate to be selected to go to the Netherlands for two and a half weeks. And so to get there, it was an indirect flight. First we, uh, first they went to Winnipeg and then Ottawa. And then with about three quarters of all the International Air Credit Exchange participants, there was 66 total, about three quarters of them. We spent uh, two days in Ottawa, touring the, touring the city, and uh, which will come up on the next slides. So for this portion, I'll invite up John. We were two cadets that spent uh, our two days together in Ottawa. Tyson actually went to Vancouver because he was closer uh, to Australia by going to Vancouver instead of Ottawa. So before going to our countries, we went to many different beautiful places in Ottawa, and one of them is the parliament. So pretty much we learned a little bit of background history about our government, we got to visit the House of Lords and like the House of the Commons. And this is also the first time that I met my Netherlands group. So there were four Canadians going to the Netherlands and a total of 16 cadets in the Netherlands from different countries, which you'll see. Uh, so this was all four of us in the red polo shirts in front of the parliament. <coughs> Then we also visited the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, uh, which is right across from Parliament. So at that same day, we went back to the Parliament Hill to go for the light and music show. It's This show is like a little bit of background history about Canada, how we were like founded, and then how government, and then about like a little bit more history about our nation. And then on the second day, we went to the Canadian National War Museum. So here, if you can see, these are some tanks uh, in display, on display. Uh, here's an aircraft. Down here, more tanks. Uh, here's a replica missile bomb kind of a thing. Uh, and it was a massive museum. There were things relating to the uh, actual physical what the military uses so uh, tanks etc and there were also uh, the suits of armor that people wore uh, everything from two three four hundred years ago to the future so they had like even like an Iron Man display there then we visited the Diefen bunker so this was really cool just because it was so massive uh, so this was created about 40 50 years ago during the Cold War by the then Prime Minister uh, John Diefenbaker <laughs> And to give you an idea of how big this is, it is four stories underground, a total of 100,000 square feet, uh, all made out of concrete. So it included things such as a computer room, uh, sleeping quarters, a medical clinic, mess hall, a gold vault to store all of Canada's gold. Uh, just to give you an idea, of, so this would, this would have been, if it was ever used, it would have been the, all of, you could say, national headquarters of Canada. <coughs> So one of the other things we did while in Ottawa is to visit the National Military Cemetery to give some respect to the soldiers who fought for our nation, to have our wonderful country we have now. Alright, thanks John. So that's the Ottawa part, that was the two days, now we're going on to the 15 days spent in the Netherlands. So the first day that was supposed to be spent in the Netherlands, uh, it, was, it was a little bit different. So we went from Knot CTC, which is where I was staying, to the Ottawa airport, boarded the plane to Toronto, which would, then I would have gotten onto a second plane from Toronto to Amsterdam. It got delayed. So we said, okay, we'll wait here for an hour. And then it got de delayed for another hour. So we deboarded the aircraft. After another two more hours of delay, so a total of four delays, they said our plane's canceled. So we said, okay, we'll wait around here, see if we can get a rebooking. 
After three more hours, we went back to Knott CTC, waited for the next day, and then went from Ottawa to Vancouver to Amsterdam. <laughs> but the good, good thing is, on both flights, we uh, got invited to check out the cockpit. So this is in Toronto. I'm on the right side. The pilot, uh, the captain is on the left side, and we received basically a, a private tour for half an hour. He pointed, uh, pointed us to do all sorts of things. So here's the agenda. As you can see, it's pretty, it was a pretty jam-packed schedule, but I'm assuming you want to see pictures, right? <laughs> so let's take a look. So when I went to the Netherlands, we landed at the Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. This was uh, en route from the airport to the military base that we were staying at. So some notable things include the roads, which were smooth. The speed limit was 120 kilometers per hour. And if you see right here on the left side of the road, there's wind turbines. So this was something that was common throughout the whole country. Wind turbines and solar panels scattered uh, beside the roads all over the country. And also bikes. So on the right side, here's a rack of bikes. If you go to any of the bigger cities like Amsterdam, there's actually more bikes than cars on the road. This is where we were staying, so this is a military base about one hour away from Amsterdam. I have to talk about food, because it was, it, was, it was a good part. Uh, so the food there, our breakfast was at the military base, and a staple of their breakfast there is Gouda cheese and bread, which is good for the first two, three days. But after that, it gets a little bit tired. <laughs> So th there's bread in the top left corner, then we had some uh, chocolate sprinkles and a different type of bread. We had some <coughs> yogurt and dessert for, for breakfast. <laughs> then our m biggest, uh, well, our first major attraction was TU Delft. So TU stands for Technical University. And this is where Leonardo da Vinci studied uh, a few hundred years ago. Um, the top photo is all four of us, so all four Canadians there. Uh, bottom left is a wind tunnel that they have, so they have six of those, and that wind tunnel can push winds up to three times the speed of sound, so they have six of them. And on the bottom right is a fully functioning, fully moving motional flight simulator, which they made from scratch, the students made from scratch. Then, so, so Delft is a, it's a town in the Netherlands, uh, and another thing they're known for is the Royal Delft Blue, so that's like porcelain. On the right side, you can see uh, this the, the structure. To give you an idea of the size, it'd be about half my height, and the cost is about 20,000 euros. So if you want to buy one, I'm sure you can afford the flight there. <laughs> this was also at the museum. On the, on the bottom photos, those are uh, the steps to making the porcelain. So it starts with the shape, and then they put ink on it, and then they heat it up, which transfers the ink from a black color into blue. This is the city of Delft. So uh, something big about the Netherlands is that all the major, major cities and towns, they had canals going through them. So Amsterdam, for example, has over 100 handmade canals uh, that go through the city. So the middle <coughs> photo there, that's a canal. There's a boat on it. There's bikes. There's a bike rack below. Uh, and on the right side, uh, what I'm holding up right here, that's called a stroopwafel. So that was another food that, uh, food that we tried. So, Basically, imagine two thin uh, waffles, wafers basically, with syrup in between, and you heat it up, it's hot, and it tastes really good. So, apart from just visiting attractions, it was more of a cultural experience. Um, and so one of the things we visited, for example, is a supermarket on that day. So if you see the middle photo, uh, the supermarket there, well this one in particular, uh, the grocery shoppers, if they're members of the store, they can uh, pick up these devices which are scanners so whenever they're picking up something for the grocery basket they scan it along the way so they don't need to wait up uh, in line when they're checking out so it saves time yeah, then we went gliding so this is one of the highlights of the trip uh, this glider in the bottom left it's a it's a glider that costs a couple hundred thousand euros uh, it was rated as uh, they said the world's third best glider it's 40 years old designed at TU Delft and it's self-propelled. So if an emergency situation comes up, they actually have a propeller uh, and an engine built up inside the glider that you can power up. Uh, so on the right side, that's a glider. We're flying uh, above our military base. 
and uh, we did about one and a half hours of flying each in the glider, and we even did aerobatics, so that was really cool. Here's some more photos. <coughs> now, I was talking about the Netherlands being a cultural experience, or International Air Cadet Exchange being a cultural experience. Something that was special and a little bit different from just visiting the Netherlands as a tourist is that we were able to stay with host families for each of the two weekends. So I was there for two weekends and I was able to stay with different host families. So the host family basically uh, keeps you for two days, so the weekend, and they're free to do whatever they want. Um, with, with reason. With reason. <laughs> so the first host family, uh, she was Wisha, which is the, per which is the uh, person that Brent was talking about. And she lived near uh, Amstelveen, which is a, basically it would be similar to what Mississauga is to Toronto. That's what Amstelveen is to the Amsterdam. So very close by. So it was more of a city lifestyle. So obviously for the weekend, we visited the city of Amsterdam. We did a, a canal cruise. We visited the uh, different structures in the Netherlands. If you see the bottom left right there, that's the... Uh, that's basically connecting to the ocean, so the canal connects to the ocean side, and that's a cruise liner. Here's some more photos of the Amsterdam uh, part itself, so that's the kind of downtown of the city. And then we also went boating. So south of Amsterdam, they have created 11 man-made islands that people can boat to. So uh, we visited one of the islands with uh, one of the families that was there. and. Uh, it was good, we spent the whole day there, ate some ice cream on one of the islands because they have shops set up there, uh, and then went swimming. Now, something that a lot of people don't know is that the Netherlands is actually, 25% of it is below sea level. So the engineers in the Netherlands, they're world class in flood prevention. So this is a water pump that was designed and created 150 years ago. Uh, there's a video, so I'll play it soon. The middle piece is cast iron 60 tons, and each of the six supporting arms are 10 tons. And what this does is pump water from one side to a place that's uh, elevated. And they said something like, uh, if this was used today, you could fill an Olympic side swimming pool in three, four minutes. And that, so, that, so that's what it's looking, it looks like. So it, uh, it's steam powered, and it takes water from one side, pumps it to the second. 150 years ago, it's still operational. We visited all three Air Force bases that are in the Netherlands. Unfortunately, I couldn't take too many photos. Uh, but we visited, uh, we saw some CF-16s. We were actually standing 50 feet beside the runway, and we saw six of them take off. So it was a special permission we got, and it, it was, uh, that was a very cool experience. There's some uh, Chinook air helicopters. We saw some Apache helicopters. We saw a K-9 de uh, demonstration unit and they did like an hour presentation for us. And it, for all three Air Force bases, we received presentations from the, uh, from the commander of the Air Force Base. Then we visited the European Space Agency. Uh, so these are some pictures that they have uh, for their display room. We received some presentations. And in the top right corner, there's actually a prototype for the Mars rover. Now most people think this is just a prototype, it's just for show, but actually the previous Day so the day before that uh, the day before um, an astronaut can actually control it from the International Space Station so they're basically testing out long distance communication and testing out how people can uh, move this rover from uh, far, a far away place so it's a fully operational rover used uh, to test uh, the rover on Earth before sending it out. Then we visited the city of Utrecht. So Utrecht is basically the city that all locals go to instead of Amsterdam, because Amsterdam is very heavily crowded with the um, <coughs> visitors. So Utrecht is like the go-to place. And we were able to suffer beside one of the canals. Then we visited Europe's largest shipping port, and this is one of the top 10 largest shipping ports in the world, uh, Rotterdam Port. So. The ship on the left side, top left side, take a guess how many containers that holds. It's the world's second largest ship. What do you think? 
I said, oh, I don't even have that much. 25,000 shipping containers. If you imagine a sea can, 25,000 of them, that's what that ship holds. So the crew, since they're out uh, in the ocean for a few days at a time, they even have a private swimming pool and everything in there. Bottom right side, this is something that I thought was really cool because it's a 100,000 container sorting facility, all automated. So there's no one inside. Uh, and a, ro a robot's automatically controlling where the containers are placed and is automatically uh, controlling the, the sorting of it depending on when the ship is arriving, departing. If it gets late, it uh, automatically changes the containers. Uh, so, there's the, so there's about 20 cranes and maybe 50 automated trucks there that are lifting the containers and putting them in place. While we were in Rotterdam, we also received a uh, airplane freight from the Rotterdam uh, Aero Club. And to decide on who sits in the front, it was actually really good because I, they came up to me and they said, "Hey Jay, do you mind sitting on the uh, sitting in the front?" So I said, "Well, that was easy." <laughs> and here's a couple pictures from Rotterdam itself. Uh, so this is the city and the canal. Uh, that you see is actually connected to the seaport, with uh, Middle, Middle Island being uh, man-made, with wind turbines there as well. Then host family number two. So this host family, compared to the first one, was very different. The first one lived uh, near Amsterdam, so it was very much a city lifestyle, while this one lived in a village. So uh, completely different sides. One lived on the uh, west side, this one lived on the east side, 20 minutes from Germany. So. We spent the day with them, we went boating, and uh, the cadet from Hong Kong was also there with me for that, for this host family. We went gliding, so in the top right corner you can see clouds, you can see a glider. What you can see is me inside the glider. And uh, on the right, on the left side, uh, the picture's not very visible, but we, when we were there, it was actually a special day. Uh, you could see uh, the blood red moon, and just below it, you can also see a red dot, which is Mars. So when we were there, there were a lot of photographers there, so we asked, what's happening? So they said, this is, the, this is why we're here, and it's because it's a special day. So we were able to see that as well. Then we went to, a new, this is a village nearby. So on the, uh, the top photo, that's uh, Napoleon's castle. He used to live there. And the bottom is a village, and you can see that the cars, bikes, and people share the same road. So it's a little bit different lifestyle from Canada, a little bit life, different lifestyle from Amsterdam. Then we went to Germany, uh, just for a few hours, just because we were bordering it. And the cool thing was, uh, going from the Netherlands to Germany, it's like going between Ontario and Quebec. There's no border control, nothing. The road signs change, the license plate changes, the uh, language changes. Um, speed limit might change, the car types might change, but you don't, you don't stop. It's just a, a continuous motion from the Netherlands to Germany. This is one of the last things we did. We received a tour of KLM. So KLM is a airline uh, in the Netherlands, similar to how Air Canada is an airline here. So this is one of their uh, Boeing airliners, and received, we received a private tour of the cockpit, crew sleeping quarters, first class, business class, economy, we entered the cargo area, and while we were there, we also tried out their flight simulators. So these are fully uh, movable flight simulators, they have one for each of the aircraft that they operate. And to give you an idea of how realistic they are, it feels exactly uh, like how an actual aircraft would be, so it moves like it, it sounds like it, all the controls are exactly the same. And so, for example, if you're accelerating the uh, flight simulator, it tilts back to give you an impression that you're being pushed against your seat. So we were able to test them out, we uh, were able to try some takeoffs and landings out as well. And then, as a group, we visited, the, uh, the, we visited Amsterdam. Here's a couple of pictures. So this was our group. Uh, there were representatives from the UK, Netherlands, US, Canada, Germany, Hong Kong, South Korea, and Australia. So there were 16 of us total. And so there's a couple pictures of us uh, while we were swimming, uh, while we were in Amsterdam, and while we were eating stroop waffles. Here's a couple more pictures. So this was us at the Air Force bases. And here's our official photo. 
this was the only time that I wore my suit on the exchange, so it was only for 10 minutes. Uh, what I got from this exchange is, uh, well, the best thing was that it was more, we visited more of the cultural side of the Netherlands instead of just the tourist side. Most tourists would just spend time in maybe The Hague, <coughs> Rotterdam, and Amsterdam, but we were able to visit the whole country. And we were able to live with people that uh, stay there uh, over the weekends. We were able to interact with cadets from uh, that country as well as cadets from the different nations that were there. And overall, it was one of the best cadet experiences that they had. So thank you to the Air Cadet League and all of its partners that uh, bring this forward uh, from all the different countries. because. I think I can say this for all three of us, it was one of the best experiences we've had and it wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for organizations such as this one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jay. Obviously, three very fine ambassadors. We've had a wonderful time this summer and I hope they're telling every young person that they meet, hey, look what cadets can do for you. Just a little bit of a short note before we uh, are done here. Uh, a little bit state of the nation, I guess. Uh, this year's conference uh, was held down under. Uh, I had to go earlier uh, as uh, New Zealand was wanting me to go through their 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 program and assist them in in, uh, in a few things and also to get feedback for everybody else as to what they were doing. So we flew into my wife and I flew into uh, into Auckland and toured from uh, the top of the island to the bottom with some of the members, visiting those who worked in the program as we went along, seeing the sites, uh, readjusting a few of the things for, I'm a big safety guy, so uh, adjusting a few things to make it more comfortable for some of our countries to do just that. We ended down in, uh, in Wellington. We spent two days with, uh, with our eyes friends, headed over to, uh, to Brisbane. Uh, got there at eight o'clock in the morning, and my wife was a little PO'd because at 9.15 we're at the hotel. I left her in the lobby with the suitcases and the keys and started hiking it around with guys. Does the hotel do this? Where's the chairs? Do we have the equipment? Uh, did we meet somebody at the airport? This kind of thing. So about four in the afternoon I finally surfaced and said, oh, oh hi, <laughs> are you enjoying your tour so far? And uh, we moved on from there. The meeting went quite well. Uh, we had a lot, a lot to cover this time around. It was quite lengthy. We are working very, very uh, diligently on a program uh, and a process within the new website. Uh, if any of you have visited the new website or those who are working with cadets out of our, our, our national offices, they will find that there's a lot of areas in there that are very detailed. And for me to take one of your cadets and place on their name, address, phone number, birth parents, place of birth, sin number, health, all this kind of stuff, uh, very uneasy, very uneasy to have that there. So I had to set up this, this website along with Luke to make sure that this is extremely secured and that the process didn't last too long. So it gets put in in February, March, April, May, the adjustments are made by our D&D &D people to make sure that the right people 